Welcome today to the Manassas Church of the Brethren. It's so great to have you all here worshiping with us. Today's worship service is coming from our fellowship hall. Our theme today is hymns of praise. And when I was thinking about praising God, images of being in this space on Sunday mornings with breakfast jam in the summer, as guitars and banjos would play and the kids would walk around with those egg shakers, um, as we worshiped and praised God together in a time of fellowship, I thought what better place than to come this morning for worship than this place where we have praised God so many times. I have a couple of announcements to share with you today. Tonight at 7 p.m., we're going to offer our second outdoor worship service. It's gonna be a little bit longer than the service we had two weeks ago as we use tonight as a way to celebrate and continue to celebrate our 125th anniversary celebration. This weekend was supposed to be the big celebration weekend of this anniversary year, and we know we're not celebrating it as we had planned, but we are looking forward to this time to gather tonight on our lawn, bring your own lawn chairs, wear a mask for setup and for cleanup, but come as we um, share memories of the years past and look forward to the ways that God is calling us into the future. Wednesday night, we have started a brand new Bible study on 2 Corinthians. We had our first Bible study this past Wednesday, um, and we're gonna continue that study um, this Wednesday. So you are invited to join us on Zoom. We spend the first half hour just checking in with each other, um, sharing our joys and concerns and an intentional prayer time. And then with a second half hour, 45 minutes is a time of Bible study together. So you are invited to participate with us. Check your email for that Zoom link or contact the church office and we'd love to be able to include you. Also this Thursday night, our moderator of the Church of the Brethren, Paul Mundy, is offering a special town hall at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Um, the theme is racism, deeper awareness, bolder action. And the featured speaker will be a veteran civil rights leader and former UN ambassador, Andrew Young. And we are looking forward to this time to be with our moderator, Paul Mundy, and to be in conversation about racism in our nation. Um, there's more information in the September newsletter, as well as on our Facebook page. You have to register ahead of time in order to be able to attend, but we would love to be able to see you there as we continue these conversations. Also next Sunday, September 20th, is the Unity and Community International Day of Prayer for Peace. This year, we're gonna be offering it as an online event, live on Facebook on the very special, brand new Facebook page for International Day of Prayer for Peace. So you can search for that on Facebook and like that page and follow it before this Sunday, so you'll get all the latest updates. Um, you can also find a link to that page on our Facebook page. So just go to Manassas Church of the Brethren Facebook page and scroll down until you find the International Day of Prayer for Peace. It's an interfaith service um, with music and litanies and prayer, and it's just a, a really sacred time to be together as one community as we pray for peace with one another. Let us enter into this time, opening our hearts, opening our minds for worship today.
Good morning and welcome. Will you please join with me in the call to worship? When I think of God's presence in the world, I am grateful. Grateful for the presence of hope, grateful for the gifts of life. And when I think of God's presence in my own life, I'm humbled. Humbled by the gifts of grace, humbled by the invitation to begin again. And when I think of God's presence in our community, I'm glad. Glad to be in fellowship with people worshiping our holy God. Thank you all, and thank you, God. Shall we pray? Dear God, for your love and compassion to abound as we walk through this challenging season, we ask for wisdom for those who bear the load of making decisions with far-reaching consequences. We pray for those who are suffering with sickness and for those who are caring for them. We ask for protection for the vulnerable among us, not to succumb to the risk of this horrible scourge. We pray that misinformation will be curbed, that fear may take no hold in our hearts and minds as we exercise the good sense that you and your mercy have provided. May we also approach each day with faith and peace, trusting in the truth of your goodness toward us. Amen.
Our scripture reading today is Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with the timbrel and dancing. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Children, as we start our children's story today, I want us to think about the Psalm 150 that Mr. Jim Earl just finished reading for us. You know, his wife, Nancy, would be in this space during breakfast jam a couple of times and she would play her mandolin. And I think about that as I was listening to him read that Psalm 150. But as part of that Psalm, I want you to hear these words and we're gonna praise God together as our children's story. It says, praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Can you make a trumpet sound? Doo -doo -doo -doo! What trumpet sound can you make? That's awesome. It also says, praise him with the harp and the lyre. These are stringed instruments. So can you make a pretend string instrument or pretend to play the harp? You can move your fingers at home. Oh, what a beautiful harp sound. Good job. It also says to praise him with the timbrel and with dancing. Whenever I think of the timbrel, I always think of maybe shakers with bells. And you can dance at home. Can you dance with us? Awesome job. As we continue to read our text, it says to praise him with the clash of cymbals or praise him with resounding cymbals. I have some cymbals over here. I don't know if you can see that in the screen. I'll show it again. It's a very cool sound. But that's the beautiful thing about praising God is that we can praise him with a multitude of instruments, whether we're blowing a horn doo -doo -doo -doo, or playing on strings or a shaker or the cymbals. Whatever instrument you have to share, whatever voice you have to lift up, use that as a way to praise God in love and in worship. Let us praise God now in a prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all the ways that we can praise you, all the ways that we can lift up our voice and all the instruments that we can play that offer music to you as a way for us to worship you and to say we love you. Amen. As I was preparing my remarks for this part of the service, I came across voluminous writings on church stewardship and giving. There were even some actually funny stories involved. Some were absolutely priceless. Maybe we could do these on another day. But what really caught my attention were some powerful quotes and sayings from the scriptures and famous people and just ordinary people. Let me share a few of those with you. And certainly without question, the most famous of these would have to come from the book of Acts where Jesus says, it's more blessed to give than receive. But some of the remarks, one, the mark of a great church is not the seating, not its seating capacity, but its sending capacity. Uh, another one, it's possible to give without loving, but it's impossible to love without giving. And lastly, you can have a perfect day. You cannot have a perfect day without doing something for someone who will never be able to repay you. Let us pray. Dear God, you are the great provider the giver of all gifts. Your love is the only true currency. Thank you for putting money into our hands 
so we may freely offer it back to you for your use and service. We do this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you give life to life. From day one, your spirit brooding over the deep, your wind rushing, your breath filling. As creatures of the earth, we rejoice in life, using our breath, our very being, to raise this hymn of praise. Alleluia to the sun's hot passion, embracing the ground's great shoulders. Alleluia for the growth from sea to plant, greening the earth, its fruit, beauty, and food. Alleluia for generations of life, tumbling one after another, life that's creeping and swimming, flying and running below, above, a bond upon wind thin for all the world sings calls signals speaks 
Praise to you, God, whose glory grows in all that breathes. Knowing your power, knowing your love for us. Lord, we bring our request to you this morning. We pray for all we know who are grieving, who are missing a loved one this morning. Give comfort and rest and peace. We pray for all we know who are sick in mind or body, who are recovering from surgery or who suffer from chronic conditions. Give healing and wholeness as only you are able. Lord, we long for reconciliation with those we have harmed with harsh words or harsh actions. And we pray for peace among our warring nations. Fill us, enliven us to be ambassadors of life abundant, breathing out your song in harmony, singing to you, our creator, whose glory shines through all the world. Amen.
As we continue in the sermon series of our favorite hymns, we're going to be looking at three hymns that we have sung today. Our first hymn is How Great Thou Art. Our second hymn is A Mighty Fortress Is Our God. And our final hymn is I Sing the Mighty Power of God. First, let's talk about that opening hymn we sang, How Great Thou Art. It was originally written in 1885. And hear these words from Isaiah 45, verse 18. For thus says the Lord, who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did not create it in vain, who formed it to be inhabited? I am the Lord, and there is no other. Carl Boberg was a 26-year-old Swedish minister, and he wrote a poem in 1885 that he called A Mighty God. The words literally translated to English said, When I the world consider, which thou hast made by thine almighty word, and how the web of life Thou wisdom guideth, and all creation feedeth at thy board. Then doth my soul burst forth in a song of praise. O great God, O great God. His poem was published and forgotten, or so he thought. But several years later, Carl was surprised to hear it being sung to the tune of an old Swedish melody. But the poem and the hymn did not achieve widespread fame. But hearing this hymn in Russia, English missionary Stuart Hine was so moved, he modified and expanded the words and made his own arrangement of the Swedish melody. He later said his first three verses were inspired line by line by Russia's rugged mountains. The first verse was composed when he was caught in a thunderstorm in a village. The second, as he heard the birds sing near the Romanian border. The third, as he witnessed many of the mountain dwellers coming to Christ. And the final verse was written after Dr. Hine returned to Great Britain. Sometime later, Dr. J. Edwin Orr heard how great thou art being sung by tribes people in India. And he decided to bring it back to America for use in his own meetings. When he introduced it at a conference in California, it came to the attention of music publisher, Tim Spencer, who contacted Mr. Hine and had the song copyrighted. And it was published and recorded. During 1954, Billy Graham crusade in the Herringay Arena, George Beverly Shea was given a leaflet containing this hymn. And he sang it to himself and shared it with other members of Graham's team. Though not used in London, it was introduced the following year to audiences in Toronto. And then in New York crusade of 1957, it was sung by Bev Shea 99 times with the choir joining in the majestic frame. Then sings my soul, my savior, God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. A song that started with a poet in Sweden, traveled to Russia, made its way into India, came back to the United States, and sung in Toronto, (laughs) traveling around the world as it gained verses and new melodies. We sing this song, How Great Thou Art, knowing that we don't sing praises to God alone, but rather we join our voices with people all over the world who sing with us. Our second hymn today was A Mighty Fortress Is Our God. (laughs) This song 
was written in 1529. Let that sink in for a minute. 500, nearly 500 years ago. How many voices have sung this song as a praise hymn to God? Hear these words from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. We think of Martin Luther as a great reformer, Bible translator, political leader, a fiery preacher, and a theologian. But he was also a musician, having been born in an area of Germany known for its music. And there in his little village, Martin grew up listening to his mother sing. He joined a boys choir that sang at weddings and funerals, and he became proficient with the flute. And his volcanic emotions often erupted in song. When the Protestant Reformation began, Luther determined to restore worship to the German church. He worked with skilled musicians to create new music for Christians to be sung in the vernacular. He helped revive congregational singing and wrote a number of hymns. And often he borrowed popular secular melodies for his hymns, though occasionally a tune brought criticism and he was compelled to let the devil have it back again because it was too closely associated with bars and taverns. So scandalous. But in the foreword of a book, Luther once wrote, next to the word of God, the noble art of music is the greatest treasure in the world. It controls our thoughts, our minds, our hearts, and spirits. A person who does not regard music as a marvelous creation of God does not deserve to be called a human being. Those are some pretty harsh words. Martin Luther went on, he said, he should be permitted to hear nothing but the braying of donkeys and the grunting of hogs. <laughs> but Luther's most famous hymn is a mighty fortress is our God and it's based in Psalm 46 and reflects Luther's awareness of our intense struggle with evil. In difficulty and danger, Luther would often resort to this song, saying to his associate, come Philip, let us sing the 46th Psalm. It's kind of a difficult hymn to translate because the original German is just so vivid. There are at least 80, 80 different English translations that are available. And the most popular in America was done by Frederick Henry Hodge. But an older version appeared in a Pennsylvania Lutheran church book of 1868 with these words, a mighty fortress is our God, a trusty shield and weapon. He helps us free from every need that hath us now or taken. But the British version, A Mighty Fortress, is Thomas Carlyle's translation. A safe stronghold, our God is still, a trusty shield and weapon. He'll help us clear from all the ill that hath us now or taken. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing, our helper amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. A hymn that's been sung for 500 years, been translated over 80 times into English alone, that reminds us that God is our refuge and our strength and a very present help in trouble and always has been and always will be. Our closing hymn today is 
I sing the mighty power of God. It was originally written in 1715, and I wanted us to hear these words from Jeremiah 51, 55. He has made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom and stretched out the heaven by his understanding. It was written by Isaac Watts. And as he quietly pastored Mark Lane Chapel in London, the growing popularity of his hymns was causing a stir. People complained. One man in particular said, Christian congregations have shut out divinely inspired psalms and taken in Watts flights of fancy. The issue of singing hymns versus psalms split churches maybe much in the same way that contemporary versus traditional hymns have split churches today, including the one in Bedford, England, once pastored by John Bunyan. But the controversy jumped the Atlantic. And in May 1789, Reverend Adam Rankin told the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church meeting in Philadelphia I have ridden horseback all the way from my home in Kentucky to ask this body to refuse the great and pernicious error of adopting the use of Isaac Watts hymns in public worship in preference to the Psalms of David. We don't know Isaac's reaction to all of this tension built by the hymns that he wrote. But Dr. Samuel Johnson later reported that by his natural temper, he was quick of resentment. But by his established and habitual practice, he was gentle and modest and inoffensive. But in 1712, just three years before this particular hymn was written, he suffered a breakdown from which he never really fully recovered. He asked his church to discontinue his salary, and not only did they discontinue his salary, but they raised it, and they hired a co-pastor who assumed the bulk of the pastoral duties. So Watts remained a pastor the rest of his life, preaching whenever he could. There was a wealthy couple in the congregation, Sir Thomas and Lady Abney, who invited him to spend a week, a week, on their estate. Isaac accepted and lived with them until his death 36 years later. That's quite a visitor to have in your home who you invite to come in for a week and they stay and live out the rest of their life for 36 years. But during his time there, he enjoyed the children in the home and in 1715, he published Divine and Moral Songs for Children. It sold 80,000 copies in a year, and it's been selling ever since. But in his preface, he said, children of high and low degree of the Church of England or dissenters, baptized in infancy or not, may all join together in these songs. And as I have endeavored to sink the language to the level of a child's understanding, to profit all if possible and offend none. Think about his early hymns that divided the church as they questioned whether they could sing these new contemporary hymns as opposed to the Psalms of David. To know that he decided to write songs for children with simple language so as not to offend anyone. And one hymn in this volume for children became popular with adults. And you guessed it, it was originally entitled Praise for Creation and Providence and has these words. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad and built the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day, the moon shines full at God's command and all the stars obey. 
a hymn of praise intended for children, for all of us to sing together, bringing all of our voices, all of our instruments, clashing cymbals, timbrels, piano, lyre and harps, to offer our praises for all generations from 500 years before of hymns to all the hymns that may come. We give thanks and praise to God. Amen. As we go from this time of worship together, may we go praising God with all that we are and every breath we take. Amen.
We're so glad you got to worship with us today. If you haven't already done so, feel free to comment below. Let us know that you are here, that you are watching with us, and that you are worshiping with us today. And we look forward to seeing you next week.